Oh, hey, Roanoke. Happy holidays and welcome back to this month's edition of Note News. We're your hosts, Casey Lewis and Carol Corbin. And we're here at the Hotel Roanoke and Conference Center for the return of the Fashions for Evergreens competition, where dozens of local businesses and organizations are vying for the most sought after People's Choice Award. These trees look so amazing. So much effort had to go into them. We can't wait to find out who the winner is through dollar vote counts and a professional panel of judges on New Year's Day. Casey, what's been happening around the city of Roanoke? Let's keep watching to find out. This year marked the 40th anniversary of the Roanoke Times Dickens of a Christmas. We kicked off this three-night celebration on December 2nd with the annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony where Robin Reed completed his final broadcast with WDBJ7 and was awarded a ceremonial key to the city, which is one of our highest honors. Dickens of a Christmas is a favorite community tradition in Roanoke with many festive activities to get you in the holiday spirit. RPD was awarded grant funding to obtain 15 new fleet bikes. These Trek service bikes allow officers more accessibility in areas where police cars cannot go, like the Greenway and highly trafficked areas like shopping center parking lots during the holiday. These trained and highly skilled officers spent time learning about the improved functionality of these new bikes and practicing maneuvers. We currently have 42 certified bike officers. In addition with the new 15, we have 36 bikes. To be a certified IPIMBA, police officer, you have to attend a 40-hour course. Um, most cyclists, can we can put them on a greenway and they can ride in a straight line for hours on end. But riding in crowds or slow maneuvering bikes is a, is a skill that we have to teach. Because we have to teach, to teach them to ride in and around cars, uh, in and around people. And so the cone courses you're seeing behind me are, are set up to teach them to balance the bikes and to learn that they can balance the bikes and still ride, and ride in slow movements to be able to make corrective actions going slow so that they're safe. On Monday, November 28th, the City of Roanoke held an investiture ceremony installing newly elected council members Peter Velosen and Luke Pretty and re-elected members Vivian Sanchez-Jones and Joe Cobb, effective January 1st, 2023. At this time, Councilmember Cobb will also be serving as Vice Mayor. And now let's take a quick moment to hear from council members Bill Bespich and Anita Price as they near retirement at the end of the year. What's your name? My name is Bill Bestpitch. How long have you served on council? At the end of this month, it'll be 16 and a half years. What are you most proud of in your time serving? Two things. Helping to get the uh, tree stewards and uh, commemorative tree program started by asking our former city manager to appoint an urban forestry task force. And secondly, working with the former city attorney and others to reorganize our precincts so we now have 20 precincts of all about the same size instead of having some with only a few voters and some with about three times as many voters. What do you wish you could have done? Dream big if you could have done anything. Reduce poverty, eliminate poverty in the city of Roanoke. What's next? What's the first day of retirement for Bill Bestfitch? Sit back, relax, Think about some traveling that uh, my wife and I want to do, uh, but I think I've earned a rest. What's your name? Anita James Price. How long have you served on council? 13 years. What are you most proud of? Oh my gracious. Um, of course, first and foremost, working for the youth. Um, being able to reinstate our Youth Services Board, which I pray and I know it will continue because so many great people like yourselves, like yourself, have already been, you know, instrumental in making the activities and things that we do for our, our most precious commodity, the youth and the children of our, of our beautiful Star City. 
<laughs> Dream big. What do you wish you could have done? You could have done anything. If I could have done anything, I would love to have been able to say that we reinstated the Office on Youth. And I, my dream and my wish, we have enough money, because I know we already have the heart, but that one day that that will come to fruition. First day of retirement, what's next? Oh my goodness, what, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. uh, I. <laughs> Well, this is going to sound a little crazy. Most people would think that I would just go home and sleep. But um, my second job, being involved with the Harrison Museum, that's, that's where you'll find me with my dear husband, Charles. Congratulations on your retirement, and we will truly miss you. January's right around the corner, and you know what that means, New Year's resolution times. Maybe you want to learn a new language this year, travel more, or volunteer. Or maybe you want to reduce your debt, save to buy a car, or even buy a house. This leads us to introduce our segment guest. I'm Brandon McGinley. I'm the Financial Stability Specialist at the City's Department of Economic Development. Roanoke's Financial Empowerment Center provides no-cost, one-on-one financial counseling to all Roanoke area residents. The Bank on Roanoke Valley initiative aims to get folks into safe, affordable mainstream bank accounts and to offer financial literacy workshops in the community. A couple pieces of advice. Start by tracking your daily spending habits. Writing down every morning, what did I spend my money on, how much, and on what the day before. Over the course of a month or two, you'll be able to get a sense of what those expenditures look like and maybe even get a sense of what you might be able to cut back on. Think of your savings goal monthly as if it were a utility bill or another expense that you don't want to miss. Maybe I'll take $25 and save myself first before I spend money on anything else and put that $25 into a savings account. Get a sense not only of what you're spending, but of your overall assets and obligations. Tally up all your assets, that being things that are illiquid perhaps, like your home, your car, and then your savings accounts, your retirement accounts. Get a sense of what you have, but also you wanna get a sense of what you owe. And so you look at all your credit card debts, you look at all your student loan debts. We have busy lives, especially this time of year. Um, we're not necessarily thinking about where do we stand ourselves, our families, and our overall financial picture at all times. Set up an appointment with a FEC counselor at roanokefec.org at any time. That's a wrap for us on this month's edition of Nope News. We hope everyone has a safe and happy new year. See, See you, you next time. time.